Hi, and welcome to a Sergeant at Arms training. I'm Helen Brenner, and I'll be guiding you through this session. I've been with Toastmasters for two and a half years, and six months after joining, I became a Sergeant at Arms. And a year later, I became Club President. I recently finished a role as District 100 Conference Chair. And I'm taking on the role of area director and vice president of education for my club. The role of Sergeant Arms was my toe dip into the water that really encouraged me to jump into the pool. Through this training, I am hoping to share with you insight about Sergeant Arms from a hybrid, virtual, and in-person perspective. There's a lot of the same things that happened in all, and there's a lot of different nuances. Sergeant in Arms is not a small role. As the Sergeant in Arms of your club, you make sure that meetings are well run and you set the tone for not only the atmosphere of the club and the meeting itself, but you're in charge of making sure that it's organized. The Sergeant at Arms role was originally designed for in-person meetings, but now that we have clubs that are in-person, virtual, and hybrid, the SAA role can vary significantly depending on the meeting format. So as we go through this training, I encourage you to reflect on your own experience with Toastmasters and consider what you have observed about this role. We'll cover three main areas today. We'll clearly define your role as Sergeant in Arms to make sure that everyone understands its importance. We'll walk through the responsibilities associated with the position and emphasize the importance and scope of each task, why we do it. And in the end, I will share some resources that will help you understand more about what you can do in the position and how you can support your club from a Sergeant in Arms perspective. Some of you might be new to Toastmasters and only have attended virtual meetings. Others may have been with Toastmasters long before virtual meetings were a thing. And some of you might belong to hybrid clubs. So as you're going through this, I invite you to think about your perception and understanding of what the Sergeant in Arms does in different meeting formats. What does your club's Sergeant in Arms do? And how does their role differ from other formats? As the Sergeant at Arms for your club, you play a crucial role in setting the tone for your meeting. You're the first point of contact for members and guests, and you want to make sure that people feel warmly welcomed and comfortable. Your role is also crucial to make sure meetings start on time and all the equipment and space is set up as needed for however you're meeting is held, whether you're online or in person. Let's break down the Sergeant at Arms responsibilities into clear segments. Each of these areas involves specific tasks that are crucial for the smooth operation of your club meetings. We'll talk about meeting space, preparation, and setting it up for in-person, virtual, and hybrid. We'll talk about managing the arrival process of members and guests, managing logistics, participating in the executive committee, and enlisting the help of others when you're unable to attend or overwhelmed with tasks. Before the meeting, it's important to make sure that you are prepared. It's important to make sure that your meeting space is confirmed or set up as you need it to be. You may already have a set of Rome or meeting location. You might already have a Zoom that's been set up. However, it's really important for Sergeant at Arms to confirm that, to make sure that that continues throughout the year while you are Sergeant at Arms. If you're in-person or hybrid, you'll be the one to coordinate the supplies and equipment your club uses, such as a podium, the banner, ballot sheets, ribbons, promotional materials, pens, etc. You need to be sure that these are stocked and brought to your meetings. If you're a hybrid, equipment will include microphones, cameras, and computers. It's a good idea to maintain a running checklist so that you can be sure all necessary items are ready. Let's talk about what happens upon arrival, whether in-person or virtual or hybrid. If you are meeting in person, it's a good idea to get there at least 15 to 20 minutes early. 
That way, nobody shows up to an empty space with the doors locked. When you get there, set the room up according to your meeting needs. This will include a banner, a podium, chairs and tables, and any AV equipment you're using. Ensure all supplies like ballots and pens and ribbons and promotional materials are available and set out. And you might even have a snack table to set up. Be sure that the room temperature is comfortable. You don't want it too warm and you don't want it too cold. And as guests and members start arriving, welcome everybody. Make them feel comfortable. You're the one to act as the host of your meeting presence. Speak with guests, taking note of their names to give to the president so the president will be able to welcome them personally when he or she begins the meeting. If you have a guest book, invite guests to sign it so you can have their name and contact information. And be ready to start the meeting on time. It's a good idea to give everyone a one minute warning before starting so members and guests can find their seats and finish up any conversations. If you meet virtually, log in at least 15 to 20 minutes early. Ensure that all technology aspects are functioning before the meeting starts. Check the link to make sure it's valid. And if you have any connected issues, coordinate with president or other executive committee members for a backup plan. You may not be able to log in, but they could, and the meeting can go as planned. In between meetings, take the time to familiarize yourself with common technical issues and how to resolve them quickly if they come up during a meeting. Familiarize yourself with features like polls, chat, and breakout rooms that might be needed by your club. Being proactive in managing these tools can significantly enhance the meeting experience and make your job easier. If it's part of your club's SAA role, you might need to provide clear instructions and support to members on how to access the meeting. This might include sending out links ahead of time, providing a quick guide on using meeting features, or even hosting a pre-meeting tech check. When you log in, claim the online host key so you can view people as needed and allow access to share screen or set up breakout rooms as needed. Be sure to assign other members of the executive committee co-host role so that they can co-manage the meeting. Greet members and guests as they join. Welcome each person warmly and keep an eye on the waiting room if your club uses it for guests. A surgeon in arms, you're responsible for meeting security to prevent unauthorized access and disruptions. This can include using waiting rooms, using required passwords, and controlling who can share their screen. And it's really important to ensure that the meeting starts on time. And just like in, in person, give a one minute warning before the start time so people can transition into meeting mode. If you are in a hybrid meeting format, you're gonna combine the elements of both in-person and virtual formats. And this is gonna require you to manage both physical and virtual setups. And remember, you're not necessarily the person that's doing all of these things, but you are the person to make sure that these things happen. You wanna make sure that the physical meeting space is equipped with the necessary technology. There might be somebody who is the person who does that all the time, who will bring it in, or you may be the person to bring it in. I would arrive even earlier than 50 to 20 minutes early so that you can make sure that you can set the room up as far as your tables and chairs and podiums and all that equipment, also to make sure that your technology gets set up. And it's a really good idea to enlist help from other members as needed. You need to ensure your microphones, cameras, and other equipment are working and positioned correctly to allow everyone to see and hear clearly and that there's good technology interaction between in-person and virtual participants. You want everybody to feel like they're in the same room together. So you want the people who are online to be able to see the room and the person speaking and also the people who are in the room to see who is online and who is speaking. Same way you would do it in virtual or in-person, you want to welcome everyone, whether they are attending in-person or virtually. As with the in-person meetings, make sure that all your supplies are available and set out. Again, your podium, your banner, your ballots, your pens. 
promotional material, snack table, whatever it is you are bringing into your meeting. And you want to manage the attendees the same way you would in an online format. In other words, check to make sure if you have a waiting room, having people log it in uh, and make sure that you are the gatekeeper for who is coming in virtually. It's a good idea to get feedback from participants, both online and in person, so that you can really see how the setup is working and if microphones need to be moved or screens or cameras need to be in different places so that everybody can feel like they're in the same space together. And just like with online and in person, give everybody a one minute warning so that they can settle in and get ready for the meeting. It's important to start the meeting on time. That is the Sergeant at Arms role. It is a time to interrupt any side chat that's happening and get everybody's attention to start the meeting. At this point, you announce ground rules, such as muting yourself if you're virtual, avoiding side chats in person, and not walking between the audience and the podium, especially for hybrid meetings where this could block the camera view. Sometimes people may not know where the camera is and they might inadvertently walk in front of it. And for virtual people, it's a good idea to suggest to them to turn off their camera if there's too much activity in their personal space that could be distracting to other people who are in the meeting. Whether you are meeting online, hybrid, or in person, your job is to manage the room. You want to mute people online if they are making noise, and if people arrive after the meeting has started, you want them to come in when there's an opportune time so that their entry doesn't disrupt the meeting. If you're virtual or hybrid, use the chat function to welcome latecomers and find out more about them if you don't know who they are, and then share any information privately with the president. Depending on your club, you may be responsible for distributing and collecting ballots and tallying votes, if that's what your club does. And that can be done in person with paper, or it can be done online with breakout rooms or privately chatting. After in-person and hybrid meetings, your role is to pack up all the materials and equipment and ensure everything is in order and accessible for the next meeting. This includes all the supplies and equipment you brought into the meeting, at this point, it's a good idea to make note of any room or supplies or technology issues and needs to discuss with the executive committee. You'll also need to put the tables and chairs back where they belong according to what was required of the space before and make sure you clean up and get rid of any trash. Leave the meeting space in better shape than you found it. And it's a good idea to Ask other members to help you make this process go quicker. Sergeant at Arms is part of the executive committee, and part of that role is to attend monthly committee meetings. This is where you will officially report on the status of meeting spaces, discuss any issues or needs surrounding your role, and help coordinate logistical needs of upcoming meetings, like your supplies and technology and to participate in strategic planning and decision-making as a whole with the executive committee. Depending on your meeting format, it's really important to make sure that everything is coordinated so that your meetings start on time and run smoothly and you have everything that you need. There will be times when you'll be unable to attend a meeting so it's important to delegate responsibilities, such as ensuring that someone else has access to the meeting space or knows how to start the virtual meeting. And having assistance with logistics for in-person and hybrid meetings can really help lighten the load. There can be a lot of stuff to do, and you don't have to do it alone. This is an opportunity for you to have other people be able to help you do your role better. And then also, as you're doing that, you're preparing other people to be able to take on the sergeant at arms role in the future. So here are a few resources that you could use. All right. I put the item number next to it. So when you go into toastmasters.org, 
you'll look in the resource section and you'll put in the number and hopefully it will take you to these different items. The Club Leadership Handbook is a really good resource to be able to get an idea of not just a sort of arms role, but all the roles that are in your club. So if you want to go ahead and just uh, either stop your screen now and take a screenshot or, or just jot down these numbers uh, of different items that could be useful for you. So that's it. That's Sergeant Arms in a nutshell. As you've seen, it really has a lot of different things that are, are important depending on your format. And it's vital. You are the person who greets people, lets people know they're welcome. You keep everything on time. And you're the gatekeeper, making sure that people come in as they're supposed to and that people uh, are, are welcome. Remember that your role is foundational to the success of every meeting. And I hope that this has been useful for you for your role as Sergeant Arms.